Hey guys, we come back to projectile motion and today we are going to consider all type all typical questions this part one because it refers to the basic projectile motion and today we are going to discover four questions that actually you need to know and must know. Okay, that's A-level mechanics revision with Daniel Dallas. Let's get started. But before I just remind you that we discovered the physics lay behind the projectile motion. So make sure you watch that because that's really interesting and that's sort of like basic blocks that you need to understand because today we're just going to apply the formula that we picked up before, okay? So let's get started and here is the problem. Here is the projectile that was thrown at a speed of 50 meter per second at angle of 60 to the horizontal. So we need to use g equals 9.81 meter per second squared. This is acceleration freefall. Here we need to calculate the time the projectile is in the air. So that's the first question. It means that it's from the starting point, from point O, to the final point where it lands to the ground. This is the whole time required. So during that time it covers the maximum range. So this maximum range and actually we need to set up the formula that from where we can figure out the time. So what I recommend, I recommend to use that formula for position vector that describes position in any point of time. And as you understand, in this case, when it started from here, it goes for consecutive points until it reaches the ground. So that's why let's set up this vector in this way. And that's going to be the position vector at the given point of time. So that's why we are going to write R from time when it lands. So time basically in the air. So time it's completely is in the air. And obviously it's going to be the, uh, it will have two coordinates and X coordinate is going to be the maximum range. So we can write maximum range. It's simply X coordinates. And what about Y? The final position uh, Y coordinates is going to be zero because it lands to the ground. So remember the formula works like ut and minus gt squared over t, where y, we're going to take y component and y component for uh, position vector. In this case, we'll get this formula and we'll, we are going to use uh, y coordinates of this vector. So we can write that zero will be equal to y coordinates just remember that's your initial vector of u so i'll set them in this way so this is u and we're going to use so this is angle theta which is equal to 60 degrees and absolute value of u is 15 meter per second so that's why we're going to work out y components, which is simply this leg and this small triangle. So it's going to be u t sine of angle 60. Okay. Or generally angle theta. Let's first write the formula. Minus g t squared over t. From where, if we plug the values, we'll get the following equation. So u is 15, so we'll get 15 t times sine 60 and minus g t squared over 2 equal to 0. If we simplify that, we'll get the following square root of 3 over 2. That stays for sine 60 times 15. We can factorize time as well because time is the common factor here and here. And we will get 9, 8, 1 over 2, we'll get 4, let's calculate that. So it's better to press, so 9, 8, 1 over 2, we'll get 4.905 
t equals to zero. So the first t is zero, is the starting point of time, and that is going to be the landing point. So it's t2 that we actually required. It's going to be square root 3 over 2 times 15 and over 4.905, okay? So let's calculate that. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the equation square root of 3. So times 15 and over 2 and over 4.905. So we'll get around 265 seconds. Okay, that's the time and this is the answer for question A. So A is done. So next part, we'll go and we need to find out when does the projectile reach the maximum height if it was thrown at 11 a.m. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to set up the maximum height. This is definitely the maximum point on the graph. It's right there. So, and we can mark that this is H max. In terms of Y component, that is going to be Y vertex because graphically this is the vertex which will have the phone coordinates. It's not V. Maybe it's better to say vertex, which will have the phone coordinates. So, Y, this is the maximum height, H max. And also, in terms of X, it's going to be X max over 2. Okay. That's the vertex, but we need to find the maximum height. Yes. Sorry. Uh, we need to find the projectile, uh, the time when it was, uh, when it reached, when it reached the maximum height. So in terms of time, we can consider it symmetrically because the start of the ground here is T over two that we found before. So that's T two that we found that the whole time span from there to there, from here to here is the maximum sp time span. So that's what we can fix. T equal to 60, how much? 265 seconds. And here is gonna be T over two when it reached the maximum point because both curves up to that maximum point and down below they have symmetrical uh actually they have they have uh equal pass and to cover the distance according to according to physics the projectile requires to waste half of the time okay so that's why it's going to be t over 2, t over 2. But if you're not sure, you can uh, derive the formula for the maximum height. Basically, you can find derivative of that, and that's how we can find t over 2. If you like, you can do that. But, um, so let's check, yeah, let's check, why not? Let's try to do that. So first of all, we complete uh, y from t, that's going to be our y components of their position vector. And let's complete, so y from t is u sine 60 t main minus g t squared over t. And we take in derivative and equate to zero. So here we apply differentiation. So if we differentiate, we'll get zero equal to, so I just, okay, first I'll put that. I take derivatives because t derivative is one and minus gt from where you can have this time. So t is equal to u sine 60 over g. And now if you calculate, let's check it. So 15 times square root of three, 
n over 2 times obviously 981 and we'll get around 133.25 which is actually half of the time so that time when it reached the maximum height so we used that approach so we used h from time or basically y from time yes y from time and we differentiate because derivative for that is equal to zero at the max point okay so that's how we can derive so and actually time uh, of in the year so time in the air over two so actually we prove that if you like so but we need to find the moment of time so it means here at the maximum point it will be at time 11 oh, oh, and 1325 seconds on top of that at which time okay so next one we have the maximum horizontal range of the projectile so as we agreed to have the maximum horizontal range is the x coordinates so that means we can set up x component of the vector that we're looking for when time is what we found in the air so let's go back a little bit and we know that this time is 265 seconds so that's why 2 is 265 seconds and we'll just plug in the uh, in the x formula for that but remember that um, in this case we'll get ux basically ux component time and plus ax t squared over 2. just remember we use general form right and in this case we know that ax component is zero there is no acceleration in horizontal um, direction so that's why we simply have our x from time ux component times time so it means it's uniform motion so uniform motion with no acceleration so no acceleration so that's why we can say in our case it's going to be our x so that becomes the maximum range so max range and it, it becomes so ux component just let's go back a little bit so that's vector and the x component is going to be here okay so this u cos that's u cos okay oops sorry so that means it's going to be u cos 60 and times time so cos 60 is 1 over 2 so that's why maximum range max range is going to be 15 times time which is 265 and over 2 in this case our max is going to be equal let's calculate that so 7.5 is 15 over 2 times 265 and we'll get 19 point 88 meters that's going to be the maximum range and finally what we need to work out we need to work out the maximum height reached by the projectile okay so we had the max the time required for that it's time 1 3 25 seconds and that's why we can plug it there into the equation for height so equation for height is simply uh, again y component so from time when it equals to half of the time for the full span right so it's going to be one point one more time uh what's the value one three twenty five yeah one three twenty five oops twenty six 25 seconds so we just plug into the formula but the formula our y component is going to be u y t uh, plus a y t squared over 2 but we can write again 
our y component from time, from that time, is going to be equal u sine 60t minus gt squared over 2. So we simply calculated <clears throat> maximum height as the y vertex coordinate. So this is going to be h max in this case. And we just simply plug the time for that, okay? So we trying to plug time, 1, 3, 25. And right now, u sine 60 instead of u, we plug in 15. And instead of g, we put 981. Okay, let's calculate that. And that's it's going to be h max, which correspond to ry. So this is ry at a given time, and let's use calculator, so 15 times square root of 3, then we multiply by time 1.325, we divide by 2, and on top of that, so on top of that, we add, we actually subtract uh, 9 point eighty one times t squared, which is 1, 325 squared and that we are going to divide by 2 finally. So what I've got, I've got 8.6 meters. So that's the vertical height which correspond to the maximum height 8.6 meters. Alright, so we've done all the typical basic questions that you need to be aware of. So I use components form. Uh, if you prefer using I and J components, so let's do that. But it's easier to put Y and X axis and just break down by components like X and Y, if you like that. All right, so don't forget to visit A-level Zenos class for mass. That's about like foundation A-level mass. There are also explanation how a formula works. So please subscribe, share your comments, what do you expect to have next. And that was part one for projectile motion, all, type, all typical questions. Thank you and see you later.